Tis the season for festivity and joy, where people come together to spread happiness among others, and where goons like me feel the need to make a holiday themed video. So what festive themed game are you going to cover today? I hear you probably not typing. Is it the Nightmare Before Christmas, Uggie's Revenge? Or maybe it'll be another Ratchet game for people to defend. Perhaps it's We Wish You a Merry Christmas for the Nintendo Wii. Oh I wonder what on earth it could be. I could look at the title to find out, but that's such a chore. Alright, enough of rhyming. It's it's this dumb PS2 snowboard. That was fucking stupid. Since Christmas is almost upon us and the holiday spirit is in full swing, I thought that I'd take a look at something that has some sort of connection to the season. But since I couldn't find any game that fits that criteria, I've settled on this PlayStation 2 snowboard controller. B because snow. In, in snow's festive, I, I guess? Unless you live in Australia, then... then it isn't. Fuck. This is the Thrustmaster Freestyler board for the PlayStation 1 and 2. A strange snowboard slash skateboard like third party peripheral that's either going to make you feel like a pro skater or a massive goober. Oddly enough, I couldn't actually find any information about this thing, aside from it apparently being released in December of 2000, but I'm not 100% sure on whether or not that's correct, so I guess I'll just assume that the Amazon product information isn't lying to me and making me look like a tit. I, I guess? Before we take a look at the device itself, let's quickly go over the box for it. According to the Thrustmaster, <laughs> this is the ideal controller for all skateboarding and snowboarding games on the PlayStation and PlayStation 2, with it having a realistic shape that provides an exciting, true-to-life gaming sensation. And you know what? They've got a point there. It's certainly in the shape of a snowboard. Good on you for getting that right. Alright, so here it is, the Thrustmaster Freestyler. <laughs> so the board is propped up on a couple of stands that allow for you to lean left or right to simulate tilting the analog stick in either direction. Then there's two large buttons placed on each end of the board that act as the up or down button on the directional pad. Something that's worth noting is that the box does say that these two buttons are programmable, which is pretty nifty I guess, I just couldn't figure out how to do it for the life of me. This thing, it, it didn't come with a manual, the, the, the one I got, it didn't come with one. It probably does come with one, but I, I didn't get one, which is pretty dumb. Attached to this big old thing is a little Wiimote nunchuck-like controller that has your directional pad, action buttons, and triggers. So, while you're surfing around on your gnarly plank, you can still perform tricks just by pressing a button. So, the board itself isn't really a full controller, and more so just acts as a giant analog stick, which is fine considering what it's for, skateboarding and snowboarding. But a big issue comes with a lack of a second analog stick, which means that you can't control the camera, but you can thrust a controller into the Thrustmaster to use the analog sticks that way, but that's kind of a pain. Another issue of this thing is that you can't go forward or backwards. The only movement options are left and right, meaning that without a controller plugged in, you can't really use it for a lot of the games that this thing wasn't designed to play. But you can't really blame them for this, because it's not designed to play the games that I'm going to be playing with it. It's just supposed to be a snowboard or skateboard. Alright, now that we've covered how this thing works, let's play a handful of games with it and see how old Thrusty here fares. So, the games that we're going to be testing out with this thing are your typical, hey, you can use a snowboard controller to play this games. We have Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3, SSX, B-Movie, Ribbit King, Burnout 3, Tekken 4, The Simpsons Skateboarding, and Klonoa 2. You know, snowboardy games. First up, we're gonna try this thing on a skating game that controls like ass with the use of a normal controller, The Simpsons Skateboarding. We should be in for a treat. <sighs> fuck's sake, why do I keep going back to this game? So you know how with a standard DualShock 2 controller, you have a pretty good amount of control over 360 degree movement. You can slightly turn left or right and skateboard around reasonably well, or in the case of this game, terribly. Well, the good old Thrustmaster <laughs> only has two noticeable speeds when leaning in a direction. Slow and holy shit I'm gonna fall off and break my neck, please send help, oh geez, I'll know. Now, this would be fine for me, providing that the slow option was easy to pull off, but nope. This thing is crazy sensitive and counts pretty much any movement as being all the way to one side, which means you're going to be wobbling around like a dashboard hula dancer. Needless to say, don't use this controller for the Simpsons skateboarding. The poor game controls mixed with the overly sensitive Thrustmaster, heh, makes for an uncontrollable mess. But hey, that's a bad skateboarding game. Let's give Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 a go. Maybe it'll be good? Oh, this, this... Oh, oh, this, this doesn't work. This, it doesn't work well with Tony Hawk, this. Oh, no. Tony's Hawk isn't, isn't a fan of this board. I'm sorry, Hawk.
Alright, so maybe this thing just doesn't work well with skateboarding games. Let's try it with SSX on tour. So the controls here aren't actually too bad. Occasionally you might fly off in a direction that you're leaning in, but aside from that it isn't terrible, but I still wouldn't recommend it at all. But hey, if you want to feel like a pro snowboarder bro, then go ahead and use the Thrustmaster. Yeah, you'll only slightly regret it. So out of the skateboarding and snowboarding games that I've tried so far, only one of the three has mildly worked, but we aren't going to stop testing it here. And you want to know why? Because I've already listed the games that I'm testing with this thing earlier and I'd look like a bit of a tit if I forgot about any of them. <sighs> B-Movie. So, hopping into B-Movie the game, we can see the biggest flaw in the Humpmeister. You can't move forward or backwards. At all. Like I said earlier, there isn't any sensor in the front to lean on, or a button that acts as pushing the left analog stick forward. So, basically, you can't really use this thing for any game where you need to push forward or backwards to move. But, I guess that makes sense considering that this thing is made for Hawks and Super Silly X-Men games. But, if I have the opportunity to complain about a snowboard controller not working with a game about a movie about a bee, then I'm gonna take it. Something that I actually found to work with the bee game is simply walking left and right pushes you slightly forward, allowing for you to move around very slowly. But once you get into a car, you're good to go around and do bee things. So the car sections of bee movie work pretty well with this thing. So that's something, I guess. Next up, we have Ribbit King. For those unaware of what Ribbit King is, it's a golf game with frogs. That's all you really need to know. Surprisingly enough, this board actually actually works pretty well with Ribbit King. Sure, it isn't as precise as a controller, but you can still aim your shots fairly well, and being able to switch between the board being analog or not lets you easily swap between aiming the shot and curving it, which is pretty nifty. There really isn't too much to say here. Frolf works with a snowboard what do you know? Similarly to Ribbit King in the car sections of B-Movie, the Thrustmaster heh, doesn't do a terrible job with Burnout 3. The car controls alright and it feels kinda cool to brutally murder other drivers by riding a car with a snowboard. There's still a fair amount of issues here, but most of them are regarding the sensitivity of tilting again. Don't, no, 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 come on, don't, don't turn around, I only, I only turn slightly, fuck, man. Yeah, there isn't too much to talk about for a lot of these games, so sorry if some of them don't get as much screen time. Blame Thrustmaster. Or, or don't. I, I don't know. So, after cruising around in Burnout, I moved on to a personal favourite game of mine, Klonoa 2. Here I checked out two levels, this snowboarding one and the first level of the game. Amazingly, both of these levels worked pretty well with the Thrustmaster. <laughs> and with a bit of time in practice, you could probably get pretty good at this game with it. The snowboarding was fairly responsive and felt pretty good, and the platforming is fairly precise, with the biggest issue being quickly switching direction in mid-air. Needless to say, I'm gonna become a pro Klonoa 2 Thrustmaster speedrunner in no time. Finally, I gave Tekken 4 a go, and amazingly, it was insanely fun. Sure, I played it on easy mode, but I think that's fair considering I'm playing it using a snowboard. Everything felt really responsive, and it kind of felt like I was actually Yoshimitsu walking backwards and forwards, which felt kind of cool. The only issue that I really had is this little controller nunchuck thing that you use for everything aside from movement isn't very comfortable, and the L1, R1, L2, and R2 buttons are in a really awkward position, making them kind of irritating to press. But after a while, you'd probably get used to it. Play, play Tekken 4 with this thing. Do it. It's good time. So, overall, if you want to use a Thrustmaster to play fighting games or 2D platformers, then go ahead. You'd probably be surprised how not complete and utter shit it actually is. But if you want to play any game that requires movement in three dimensions, then you're shit out of luck here. But you could still pick it up for a goof. You'll probably have an alright time with it. Just don't use it for extended periods of time because it will fuck your back up. Alright, that'll do it for a year. This video is a lot different to what I'm used to, so sorry if it was complete and utter trash. I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's watched and supported me over 2016, and an extra big thank you to my Patreon supporters, James, Stuart, Jaden, Joe, Corey, Mark, Classy, Harvey, and Epicat. I'll be taking a bit of a break, so there won't be any new videos for a while, but I will be back in 2017, with some fresh and tasty videos for you, so keep an eye out for them. As always, if you liked or didn't like this video, then let me know in the comments down below, have a great old festive holiday and a nifty new year. Bye-bye.